How's it going guys and we are back with another episode in Skyrim Anniversary Edition content. Today is going to be all the new homes that Anniversary has to offer and every individual home will be in the description below. The way that I base these is I do the ones that cost money first because there's lots of very good free ones. So first we're starting off with Shadowfoot Sanctum. This is a close tie with the next home. I do like this home but it is at the bottom of the list because I'm not too big of a fan of the location. The way that you get this one started is that we have to go into Riften, and we are headed to the Ratways. The quest is called Shadowfoot Sanctum, and you just have to purchase the home. So we're just coming over here. And we're just talking to this guy, and the home will cost you 7,500 gold. So, your Brimio Mithrotis landed. There's the house available right now. I'll take it. Okay, and now we just head back into the tunnels. And there is a quick exit on this house, so you only have to go through the ratways this time at least. You don't have to do it every time, because that would suck. And then once you come in here, this is the main room, the entrance, little thief flag. And this is the smithing area. And then over here we have the home parts. There's three bedrooms, or sorry, three rooms, two bedrooms. Here's the dining room. Detail looks really nice. Here's the kitchen. Pies are looking good. And then in here we have the kids room. No, this is the master bedroom. And then just beside is the kids room. And then over here I had to remake, uh, re-upload this video because I missed this the first time. Thanks to the fans, guys, always letting me know stuff I missed. The false, the false door here. And here we have the enchanting and alchemy area, and I believe this display room has the most mannequins out of all of the homes. I think there's like 20 in here, almost. And we have special spots to place the butterflies, the paragons, nice little nightingale area here because it's thief themed, which is totally awesome. Lots of weapon racks, place for all the dragon priest masks. And yeah, just an awesome home. Nice little thief home. It's unfortunate that it costs money or it would have been way higher on the list. And then the exit is just right here that leads to the Riften Docks. Here it is. So there you have it. Okay, the next up is Tundra Homestead. This is a nice home. There's no denying it's a nice home. It's beautiful. It's nice. It's little. It does have a display room, but... Again, it costs 7500 so it's a good chunk of change. So to get this one, you just have to come to Whiterun, come right up and talk to the Steward of the Jarl. I serve Jarl Balgruf as Steward. Yeah, I know. Baldy. Wonderful. Here's the key to your new home. And it's just outside of Whiterun, really close. You know, this is a really nice home. If you start the game, I would say this is a far better home to buy than the one in Whiterun for just a little bit more. Here it is, kind of like a mini version of the Hearthfire DLC homes, you know what I mean? And there's no denying this is an absolutely beautiful interior. The attention to detail. Got our cutlery, where else do you see that? Nowhere. Here we got the Bitch room. Just kidding. Bookshelves. The bitches sleep at my feet. Know what I mean? <laughs> and then in here we have our little enchanting and alchemy room. And then here is our display trophy room, which is still... Yes, it's a loading screen, but it's basically instant, so it's not even that bad. But you got a place to put all your... Dragon Priest masks, 
so much room to store things like the uh, all the claws, the butterflies, you know, the paragons from uh, Dragonborn. And lots of mannequins, which is always the best part, if you ask me. And next up on the list is Dead Man's Dread. I like the previous home more than this, but this one is free. So it's actually like a little pirate-themed home. Downside, it there's like three loading screens to get to it. But to get this one started, you're headed over here to Solitude. And we are just headed right in here into the bar, the Winking Skeever, Winking Skeever, and just on this table here, there is a book to read, The Restless, that will start the quest, The Restless. And then after that, we just have to head over here into the castle, come down into the dungeon. Talk to this guy. You can just bribe him if you want. Or intimidate him. And then we just have to get into a cell. There's a little hidden rock to press on right here. And then don't forget to read this note. Okay, and then we have this location over here, Orphan's Tier. We have to come here and there's a little boat for us to take. Just a crashed ship. Let's go! Ah! Take a little ride on the ferry. And then you will discover the aisle with a bunch of bone dogs all over it. And then once you come inside here, there will be this huge pirate ship and just a bunch of skeletons that you have to defeat. It's a really cool ship, but it's unfortunate that it's inside some random cave and it's not like, you know, just a place you can fast travel to and walk right into your house. And then once you kill all the skeletons and come down into the main bedroom, master bedroom, you just have to come to this chest and then grab the sword on the wall after you're done. There's some unique clothes in here too. It doesn't have any armor rating, but... And then right on the wall here we have a unique sword. Then you just have to escape after you kill all the ghosts. Talos disturbs your rest. Ah! Let's go. Ah! I'm the king. Ah! Okay, so once you leave this place, uh, complete the quest, go somewhere else, wait a day, a courier will bring you a pirate's note, and once you read that, this place is yours. And it's okay, like, I don't know, it's a little bit big and open and laid out a little weird. I just don't like it because there's three loading screens to get to it, and most of the rooms are like crew quarters, I guess you could say, and just kind of useless, like these last two I was just in. And it's big and open in this part of the ship. Here we have a little uh, alchemy and enchanting area there, which is a must. More crew quarters. A smithing area. Some of those scimitars on the wall if you want. The weapon racks don't actually work, which is stupid. And then the master bedroom, which you already saw. Downside, there's not like a display room, and there's not very many mannequins, so that's it for this one. Next up, we have Gallows Hall. So this is like a necromancer-themed home. 
another free home. Uh, it has a couple of unique weapons and helmets, which is cool. And to get this, we just have to come over here to Mara's Eye Pond, which was a original location in the regular game, but they added this little building to the side, Gallows Hall. And once you come inside, uh, you just have to read these three notes and the journal. You will start the quest, Dreams of the Dead. Read the Necromancer's first clue, second clue, third clue. And at this point, you're locked in. You can't actually leave. And then stuff will start to be flung all around the room. And we just have to click some torches after we read this letter. And the first one we have to do is the Torch of Morthal, and then it's the Torch of Falkreath, and then it's the Nightingale Inn, and then it is Fort Dunstead. Once you do that, you have to pick up the staff. This is a unique one-of-a-kind staff. The Staff of Worms, which reanimates dead bodies permanently, which is amazing. A good one to have in any collection, for sure. That's what it looks like. And then once you have this staff, you just have to go and reanimate a skeleton. And then he will give you a key. And then you just have to search the safe. And here we have the unique helmet. Conjuration spells 25% less cost. Damage against the undead increases by 25%. I wouldn't wear it because I don't like the way it looks, but it's unique. Once you've read the letter, then you just have to click on this little shrine and then go to sleep for an hour. Once you've done that, you have to find three soul gems. So one of them is in a coffin here, then there's another one being held by a skeleton, and the third and final one is just in the coffin right beside that. And then you go back to the normal world, and the fourth is just beside the mage on the ground if you didn't pick it up already. And then you just read this note and put all four of them on the altar, and then this is your home, I believe. Boom. Click this and it will turn the gems into black soul gems. Complete the quest. Now it's your home and you can leave. And from now on, guys, you can permanently change greater and grand soul gems into black soul gems. And they're worth more money as black soul gems, just so you know. So that's an added bonus to this house, which is really cool. And then once you come down, the master bedroom is just right here. And here we have the other unique headpiece on the table. These two helmets were in Oblivion, if I am remembering right. And stamina regenerates 20% faster, increases stamina by 70 points. So that's a good one. Especially early on, because it's a free home. Just run right here, grab these. Little vampire coffin. And there's not too many mannequins here, not too many places to put weapons on display, unfortunately, but once you come into the basement, there is a unique altar where you can summon creatures from the un like uh, the Dawn Guard DLC, undead versions of them, like the Bone Men, Mist Men, Wrath Man. You just need bones and a couple different ingredients, and there's a book right here that will tell you about it. So, cool necromancer home, not too bad. Next up, we have farming. You get the farm for free. You can just walk up and get it, but you have to pay for the upgrades. But I still consider this to be one of the best homes in the game for sure. If you are an alchemist and you enjoy alchemy, this home is for you. So you just have to come over here to Golden Hills Plantation. And then once you're here, you're gonna see a ghost guarding the front door. All you have to do is walk up, kill him, and you will start the quest. Golden Hills Plantation discovered. Read this note. 
Search the plantation for clues. Okay, so you just have to come inside. Come upstairs. There'll be a journal on the table. And then after you've read that, you can just come onto the main floor underneath the child's bed. There will be another journal. Rin's journal. And then just head down to the basement. Activate this button for the hidden room. Kill the ghost. Ah! And then read this journal. And now we just have to go and find the old well. So when you walk right out the front of the house, those three trees in the far distance, the well is right there. So once you get here, you'll realize that the little boy was killed by wolves. And you just need to take his sword back to the home. Which just happens to be under this wolf, in my case. And then once you've taken the sword and you head back inside, you just have to put it right here on the table. And then the family will appear, talk to them, and they will gift you their home. Need Your family can rest now, little buddy. And then you complete the quest, The Unquiet Dead. So now that that's done, there's going to be a missed quest to just plant a couple things in the garden. So plant 10 things. And now we are headed over here to Darklight Tower. This is just to get a steward. You can get like eight or nine stewards. Uthgird is one of them. There's a couple. But this girl, I just had to come here. She'll ask you for help to kill her mom. After you kill her mom, she'll be your follower. Ask her to follow you. Bring her to the ranch. But just so you know, when you make someone your steward at your home, they cannot do anything else ever again for you as a follower. Like, they can't come with you anymore, so choose wisely. So, I'd like to hire you. Yes, yes, yes. And then you can start purchasing all the upgrades for your farm. And all in all, the total is 7500 for every upgrade. So the home is free, the upgrades cost money, but in my opinion, this is well worth it. And you can also gain money just from having this farm. Once you've hired farm hands and it's completely done. So you can buy the upgrades, and then there's still upgrades for the home that you have to smith yourself. But it's simple. It's not like building your own home for hearth fire or anything like that, which is nice stables windmill and then you can buy the livestock once you've built all these things and then your farm is done so all in all one of the absolute best homes in the game for sure i'll just show you what it looks like inside with all the upgrades you got a nice kitchen nice dining area bedroom for the kids upstairs is the master bedroom doesn't look really any different from before, but still looks very nice. Couple weapon racks, no no mannequins up top, but once you come down here, this is where the enchanting and alchemy area is. Should have been mannequins in that middle room, but what can you do? There's a couple in here, which is nice. Some soul gems. And on this side, we got the alchemy table with all the ingredients, so amazing, amazing home. Next up, we have the Dwarven home, Nacharanthums, I think that's how you say it, Nacharanthums, I don't know, those Dwemer names, but this one is the biggest player home in the game, size-wise, no competition, it's huge, so the way that you get this one started is you have to come over here to Winterhold, and once you're in the town of Winterhold, we're just headed right into the bar. Come inside, and just over here, in this room, there is a journal. Take that, read it, you will start the quest. Discover Nichar Thumbs. Okay, so we're coming over here. It's actually right beside this Dwarven Ruin. To Frostfoot Cave. And it's just a little crevice right here. Come inside. 
There'll be some skeevers to fight. And then we're just making our way down. This part is the actual house part. Downside about this house is a couple loading screens to get in again, but... And then over here, there will be a body. We just have to take the journal, read it, grab this. There's two more on the tables to the right and left. And then you actually have to take the Dormer Cogs and the oil off this table also. Read this note. Okay, and once you have all those things, you just have to click this and it will spawn one of these guys and then you talk to him and give him the stuff that you picked up off the tables. Once you've given him the stuff to repair everything, you just have to click this. And then you just have to come over here and find one of these cores. Then once you do that, you just come over here, put that little guy in this thing, and then you will make the dwarven spiders that will start repairing your house. And then after he gets sucked up, then you just go back up the elevator into your home. And here we go. So there'll be three different levers you can pull at each kind of corner of the home. It's kind of like a big circle. And once you do that, you just have to wait 24 hours on the spot. And then everything will be fully repaired and nice. This is the alchemy lab. Super open, super spacious. You have a little bit of room to grow some crops. And here's the table with some ingredients. And then we have our next lever and this one is for the kitchen and the throne room. Let's go little buddy, rebuild it all. So again, super nice kitchen, got a little bath over there or fountain, I don't know which one it is. But here is the room fit for a king to sit. Got our throne right there, got a button here, can turn the steam on. Gets hot in here when I bring all the smoking bitches home. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get demonetized. That's okay. And the final part, we will pull this, and this is the, uh, which room is this? This is the enchanting and the bedroom area. And the smithing. So, there's our little smith area. Complete the whole quest. Now this is our full-on home. And, yeah, what's not to like, guys, you know? The biggest free home in the game. And then in here we have our little uh, area to display armors and weapons. Not too many mannequins, unfortunately, but lots of place to place things down on the walls. And then over here is the enchanting area and the master bedroom. There's a couple more mannequins in here, which is nice, but all in all, what an amazing, big, spacious home, honestly. Why ever purchase a home again in Skyrim when you can have stuff like this? And then this will just kind of loop back into the smithing area. So, yeah, basically seen it all at this point. And that's it for this home, guys. That's number four. So it was such a close, hard choice for number three. But next up, we have the Henderheim home. Now, this was a close, close tie for number two. But this is an amazing, amazing home. All you have to do for this one is a courier will come up and give you a letter. And you just have to come over here to Henderheim. 
And it's called a Warrior's Challenge. Read that and it'll send you here. So once you get here, all you really have to do is come over and talk to this one person. They'll challenge you to a fight. Yes, I need to end your life. Not very hard to defeat at all. Just a regular bandit, basically. And on her body, she will have the key to our new home. Okay, let's see what we got going on inside. This is definitely inspired by the Companions Guild. Just a super beautiful, super open, upside down ship. Got enchanting an alchemy table right here. And this is one of two display areas, which is awesome. You can put a, like five sets here, some stuff up on the walls. And then over here we have the bar, the kitchen, and cooking area. Through the end here we have the master bedroom and the kids bedroom, but I don't know who would want that. What a beautiful nice home. And then over here we have like the dining area. Not a whole lot going on in the sides. But then we have this little basement area which is the main trophy area. So super super nice you can fit like another eight sets down here again sp spaces for the unique weapons the jars the paragons the dragon priest masks the dawn guard all that stuff so yeah guys this just is an absolutely awesome home what is not to like Okay, now at number two, Blood Chill Manor. I absolutely love this home. It is so, so awesome. Uh, super open, nice, big, fancy home, and super easy to get. Also free, obviously, at this point in the video. And the quest is called Guests for Dinner. You'll get a note from a courier, but I believe that you can just come here and get it anyways. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure. We're coming over here to Blood Chill Cavern. And once you come inside the cave, there's just this absolutely beautiful stone mansion carved into the side of a cave. So, certainly vampire-themed home. Got stuff to plant for alchemy up there, just past it on the right. The wings of the homes are down these four doors. Can't get into it just yet. We've been invited to dinner here because the vampires want to snack on us all. But I'm not going to let it get to that point. Because I don't want things to get upset in the house. There's like an explosion when they betray you and just send stuff flying everywhere. And I like things neat and tidy. And then after you do that, this is the trophy display room up here. And you just have to read this note. And then talk to this guy. I think this is the guy from the Dawn Guard in a costume. Pretty sure. And you complete the quest guests for dinner and now this is your home. This is my favorite display room of them all in all the new homes. There's just so many spaces and places to put all your favorite things. You can display all the unique stuff here from the Dawn Guard. And I think from the regular game and Dragonborn, if I'm not mistaken. All the Dragon Priest masks. God's blessings on you. Paragons, butterfly jars, dragon claws. All displayed so nice. God's blessings. Okay, and on the side right here. This is the kitchen area. Nice kitchen, got some blood to drink, some cut up people, but I'm not complaining. And then this is our little enchanting side, and this one has a staff enchanter, 
which is also why it's one of the better homes because I think only two homes have the staff enchanters. Got some vampire armor. We'll place the stash stuff. Two coffins for me and Serana because she's my bitch. And just a really cool, like, you know, office area up here, I guess you could say. Master bedroom area. And then over here on this side, this is just like another little area for the kids, even though vampires can't have kids. And what kind of a dingy little vampire area would it be without a dungeon? And here's the smithing area. And the dungeon is right here. And yeah guys, so that pretty much sums it up for this house. That's it for the manor, my second favorite home in the game. Okay, now last but certainly not least, my favorite home is Meyer Watch. Now this is my favorite home for a few reasons. It has a great display area, it's super simple and compact, uh, has a staff enchanter, and it's just all around an amazing, beautiful little mage home. So the way you get this is you just have to come right over here, just near Morthal. And it's so simple. All you have to do is just come over here and cast a spell right on the thing just at the base of the door. Similar to how it was at the College of Winterhold. There'll be a little journal here that'll tell you to do that, but honestly you don't even need to read it. You can just go and do it. And it will make a little spectral rabbit that just has to come right over here and hop in this thing. Very, very slowly. And now the front door is unlocked. Okay, so on the main floor here, we have some bookshelves. This is the kind of sleeping area. There is a bed right here. Poison recipe. Just a nice little compact loop. Looks very similar to the College of Winterhold Towers. Here's the cooking area. Dining area lounge another sleeping area for the kid and so this is all around just like the more chill livable zone yeah just the attention to detail is so so good this is the house I would recommend that everybody gets right when they start a new game but where this house really shines is on the second level here we have the enchanting area, alchemy area, and a staff enchanter, and the display room and smithing zone. That's why this is my favorite home, because this floor right here doesn't have as many places to place things as other homes, but I think it makes up for it just with all around everything else. Gives you some hearthstone, some unenchanted staffs. And just all around tons of places to put all your awesome weapons. Dragon Priest masks, Paragons, the Butterfly Jars. Oh, stop meowing! Cats, am I right? Couple places for the unique daggers in the game. And here is a place for all the unique shields. Well, maybe not all of them, but four of them. And here's the place to put the Dawn Guard stuff. The Paragons. Ariel's bow. And yeah. Here we got a little garden, places we can plant things for our alchemy. And that is pretty much it guys, so you should let me know down below which house is your favorite, maybe which house is your least favorite, and yeah, I got lots coming guys, as always, I'll catch you in the next one, and peace.